loves. Hello, hello. Um, all right. So I am. So y'all know I'm trying to learn how to work this thing. So I might be messing with some stuff on this live. Don't, don't, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say it's going to work out right. But I, I see people be using this clap thing and this cheer thing. Okay, that ain't it. Um, and I got to find that. Uh, Y'all know I'm, uh, I be all on TikTok um, lives with other content creators. And I learn so much, so much, so um, but today I'm going to be talking about spirituality and money and we're going to start changing some lives. So definitely, um, hit that share button. It's an arrow is right next to shop at the bottom of your, um, screen. Definitely do that. If you have not, uh, so far, be sure to, um, be sure to follow the people that you see interacting so that you can build your own followers. TikTok is a wonderful platform. Um, I love social media for what it has done for me, what I see it has done for other people. And it's life changing if you use it right. When you use it for mess, then I mean, well, that changes your life too. It takes all your joy away from you and leaves you with misery. Um, but it can make you very wise very quickly and it can change your life. So who's ready? To have this conversation about spirituality and money. Who's ready? Now, before I get started, one more thing, guys. I'm just going to see. I'm trying to make sure that. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Let's get going. All right, guys. So, first of all, for those of you who don't know me, my name is M. Rain. That is my moniker, okay? That is my uh, television name. It is the name that I have branded, M. Rain. Now, my um, mission is to increase wealth and spiritual power. To whomever is willing to learn and ready to learn. And so I've been good at that mission since I've started because I'm kind of singular in my focus, right? I don't, no matter what else I get into, somehow your spiritual power and your wealth is going to be wrapped into all other things, all other things. And so I love teaching about spirituality. It's my absolute favorite thing, but I also love to teach about money. That is like a, a really close second. And so today I'm going to combine them because they are one thing. Again, something that I said in the last live, I'm going to repeat it again now, that money is spiritual. Okay? Spirituality is not money, but money is spiritual. Spirituality is all-inclusive, so that includes necessarily your money. Now, a lot of people, I've watched them on TikTok uh, live, and I've watched them with their videos, and they kind of dev into a little bit of something, something here and there. But I know that a lot of people don't know how to walk that line because they assume that there is a line between spirituality and money, especially for the entrepreneur. I'm here to tell you there is no line, right? What you learn in your spiritual practice is meant to benefit you across the board with your health, in your relationships, in your finances, okay? Spirituality is the process by which you begin to understand yourself as a spirit and the practices through which you, you make that easy and you make that consistent. Everybody's spiritual practice will not be the same. It doesn't have to be. This isn't religion where everybody has to do the same thing. Everybody has to believe the same thing. This is not church where you must be holy or, or you're going to be rejected by the all, by God, by the universe, by whomever. It's not about holiness from that perspective where someone else outside of you is always judging you. This is about you living according to your truth so that you can live in true peace within. You're not conflicted about who you are. You're not at odds with the truth of who you are. Now, having said that, when it comes to entrepreneurship and business and creating income and different things like that, it is so important that what you do is authentic to you. 
Now, I'm going to tell you guys a story real quick. <laughs> so, so I remember I saw Avon as a teenager. I mean, I, who didn't, right? Avon was the thing. Door-to-door -door sales and all that. I, I really wasn't that good at door-to-door -door sales, nor did I like it. But for a little while, Avon was one of my only sources of income. It was my best source of income. And so what I would do is I would stock up on all the buy one, get one freeze and all these different things throughout the course of a month. So for Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, Christmas and all of that, I would make these big gift baskets. And I would set out on the side of the road and I would sell them or I would take orders for them or whatever. And I'd fill them up with with all of these products that I had gathered in these boxes, beautiful stuff, nice stuff, some of it, little cheap stuff and real expensive stuff mixed all in together. And I made a killing like that on holidays where people would typically buy um, gift baskets. And so that was the only kind of network marketing I had ever done. Well, I had a, a best friend at the time who she got into this thing called... Um, Oh, my econ. She got into this thing called my econ. And she kept telling me about it. I was never going to make the jump. If I'm being honest with you and I'm being honest with myself, I wasn't going to do it. Okay. Um, I kept saying, oh, that looks interesting. Oh, I saw you with your thousand dollar check. That's kind of cool. But I wasn't falling for it. I was like, whatever. So I remember one day I was at that time I was living in Houston, Texas, and I was on my way to Arkansas. I'm driving and she calls me. She said, hey, what's your date of birth? And I said, oh, blah, 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 blah. She was like, okay, what's your social security number? Now, this is how you know you real close with somebody. Because I done blurted out my social security number. And then I was like, wait, what you need it for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why do you need my social security number? She was like, don't worry about it. I'm going to hit you up in a minute. So she got my name, my address, my date of birth, my social security number, and hung up the phone. And I'm driving like... That was weird. But in my mind, I'm thinking, but whatever she needed for, I would probably give it to her anyway. But I sure would like to know what the hell she needed for. You know what I'm saying? So by the time I got to Arkansas, um, it was probably about two, three hours later. I called her back. I was like, sis, what's going on? And she said, oh, I gave you a business. Check your email. Mm -hmm. So I checked my email. She signed me up for my econ. And I'm like, oh. it was $169 at that time to sign up. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I didn't want to do that. But because of the personality I have, I was not going to let her money go to waste. At the very least, I was going to work that business until she could recoup her investment on me. What I did not know at that time is that I would be so dynamic at network marketing that I would make multiple thousand dollar checks, two thousand, three thousand, ten thousand dollar checks right? That my earnings level would go off like it did. I, I was signing up so many people with my income without very much effort. And I have to shout out to my upline because they were really helping me with, with all of the ins and outs of it. But I had the ability to draw people. And so that income made it possible for me to start to change my life in a way that's different from when you're hitting the clock and you're working for someone else. Entrepreneurship is taking the helm of the ship when it comes to your financial life and saying, I'm going to I'm going to drive this the way I want to drive it. I'm going to be in control of my income. I'm going to be in control of uh, my financial future. I highly encourage every person listening to me to go after a million dollars or more per year. But at the very least, at the very least. You should be after at least a hundred, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year as income or better. At the I don't care where you live. I don't care how cheap the cost of living is where you are right now. I don't care if you don't have kids. I don't care if you're not married. All of these things are null and void to me. What matters to me is that you began to look at yourself differently to see the potential. And I'm gonna tell you, nothing shows you your potential quicker than spirituality. Nothing. When you start meditating, you, you become aware of aspects of yourself that you didn't know before. When you start getting quiet with yourself, without having to judge everything, without having to um, spend all that time and all that energy in this state of confusion, feeling like you don't know and you're not good enough. And you know how you guys have, just like I have, um, 
internalize all this frustration. I'm not where I want to be yet. I thought it would be easier. And why is this happening to me? See, you lose so much energy there because you're putting all of this energy and feeling that you're feeling into the very thing you don't want. It ain't happened yet. It's given a lot of energy to not happening. Why can't this be easier is given a lot of energy to it being hard. So we are always in control of where we put our energy, right? And when you start to meditate and you start to spend time with yourself, you start to see that you've been putting energy in some wild places. It's like, why am I giving so much energy to these things? Hey, Queen B. Hey, Atris. I know I, I, I was intending to do this earlier. Hey, Monica. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Faye. Hey, Divine Goddess. Mother of three dragons. Okay, I like that. Girl, that is tight. I should have put some energy into my little screen name, but I wasn't planning on being on TikTok like that, child. I just signed up. Now here I am. <laughs> okay. Hi, Priestess Ngozi. GG, I appreciate you guys for joining me. Hey, Enchantress Nick. All right, Ashe too. I am almost ready with that music. I'm going to be sending it to you. Y'all know if it's from my, my own rap album. Not album, song. Possibly album because, I mean, like I got a rap written, but they don't, to me, that could be like three different songs. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, yeah, I'm like, why not? Let me tell you why I can boldly just do what my heart desires. Because I went inside myself and discovered um, who I really am. And as I discovered who I really am, and I discovered all these potentialities without all of the need to be humble, the need to, to remember all the terrible things that has happened to me, and all the things that we do to, to dial back that feeling of pride about being who you are. I started meditating. I started sitting with myself. I started um, loving myself through all the pieces that I saw. Every fragment, I gave it love and I started to mend it. It did not make me a perfect person because that does not exist. It does not exist. OK, what it made me was more conscious about the truth of this reality that I am currently living in the physical. And as I become more aware, I realize that I have a lot more capabilities than I have given myself credit for. See, your mom and your dad and your siblings and everybody that's been in your life, they know more about what you're capable of than you do, even though you're the person who keeps showing up for all these different people. And so when you start to show up for yourself to say, hey, I'm with you now, it's like, you know, I'm listening to you. I'm present with you. I'm giving you love. I'm giving you energy. I'm giving you time, quality time. I'm here to hear whatever it is that I hadn't been hearing. All of a sudden you realize, you know, I have a passion for nature. You know, I've always, I remember I used to always want to take pictures. I wanted to be a photographer. I wanted to be this. I wanted to be that. And then suddenly you rediscover the things that was true for you when you were young. And then the next thing you know, because you got people like me in your ear all the time about entrepreneurship, you're out taking pictures for enjoyment. But then you start looking at all these different pictures and stuff that you've taken and you're like, these are gorgeous. I could, I could sell this. This is something I could do for a magazine. This is something that I could create for God knows what. But I can do something with this. So now you got a portfolio and now you're out here in these streets. And no, it might not be completely easy. And the first thing that you try to do may not work immediately. But you're out here and you're, you're riding the waves of where your soul feels most content. And where your soul feels safest. Because some of you believe this, but it's not true. That once you find something that pays your bills, that your soul is going to feel safe. If that is not what your soul really enjoys doing, I don't care how much money you amass from it. It's not going to feel safe. I was real good at grant writing. And I have amassed a lot of money. I had a very high approval rating when it came to writing grants and getting approvals. 
to this day, people who I wrote grants for 10 years ago are always waiting on me to come back and say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm back. You know what I'm saying? They, they look for me. They still give referrals because I was that good, but very unsatisfied with it. Very much didn't like it. At one point, I think I did like it because it was new. I didn't know I could do it. I was surprised at how good I was at it. And there was a lot of money in it when things went right. Um, but at some point, I just, it wasn't a thing anymore. And so a lot of you guys don't realize it, but pursuing your soul's purpose is the safest space or place for you. And it's going to be the wealthiest place. I didn't say it was going to be easy. I didn't say it was going to happen immediately, but I'm telling you that it will happen. Now, having said that, I did um, my first reading right before July the 4th in 2016. And when I say my first reading, what I mean is I wasn't hiding it behind Christianity. I wasn't hiding it behind being a prophetess. It was just flat out, I'm going to read you, right? And I did that reading, and I remember thinking, this feels weird because I'm not giving all the credit and glory to God and the Holy Ghost and all these kind of things. I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm guided to say, and this person is getting their life or whatever, and, and I'm not hiding behind any concept, spiritual concept. That person went and told her cousin and her sister. Her cousin became my very first VIP client. I wasn't even trying to have a VIP clientship. It would be times where she would book a session for an hour. And halfway through that session, I would get paid for another. She would ask me, you got anybody after me? No. And she would pay me for another hour or another two hours. And we would be on the phone sometimes two and three hours a day. She was just pumping me for all the information and all the assistance that she could get. But she was paying for it. And she said you need to have a VIP clientship. And at that time, I just didn't know that that was a commitment I wanted to make. I was still so fresh out of religion and I didn't want that kind of commitment. She went and told one of her friends who was a business owner, he went and told somebody and people kept telling people. And then it got to a place where I was overbooked and I'm talking to hundreds of people a month. And I was like, I love what I'm doing, but I am overworked. And so I ended up going up on my prices a couple of times, in fact. M me going up on my prices to um, to hit um, what I was really worth. And, and to be honest, at this point in my life, and that might sound prideful to you, but y'all know I do not believe in humility. Just calling it straight. There is no number I can put on uh, my time anymore. My value is way up there. Is I'm invaluable in and meaning that now I charge what is reasonable for what I am doing because I cannot any longer say I'm charging my value because I've made too many people millionaires. And so when you're making people millionaires, then your value is hundreds of thousands of dollars. Who has that? Though I make that from some people, but the majority of the people that I feel called to they're not people who have hundreds of thousands of dollars laying around. They are people who grew up on welfare, who has too many children for them to be spending money frivolously, who are single and trying to figure it out, who are working two or three jobs, who have been told all their life they're never going to be anything. All of these, those are the people that I care most about. And I care about everybody, but those are the people my heart bleeds for because that's where I come from. So when you come from the bottom, you have a desire to see other people lifted up. So anyway, I started my business from what was natural for me to do. And it worked. People kept saying, you ain't going to be able to uh, make it. But it worked. It worked because it was what's real for me. And it was what's true for me. I'm not telling you guys to quit your job today and go out and start trying to work on a business. What I'm saying is 
that as you're creating this space for you to spiritually evolve and grow, remember that it's not wrong for you to look for the parts that you can monetize. I do a reading called Chakra Wealth. I can look at a person's energetic signature or their body and see golden and green and, and, and monetary threads all through it. Sometimes it's in the throat chakra, meaning they are supposed to speak. Sometimes it's in the heart chakra, meaning that they're either healers or that there is something about their experience that they're meant to monetize. Sometimes it's in the root chakra, in which case, it's their experience and them they're going to get paid to be themselves okay and then as you develop it it don't matter what it looked like today because as you develop yourself it should move through all of it now at this point i make money throughout my whole primary chakra system there's money threads everywhere my connectivity to spirit my crown chakra gets me paid my throat chakra speaking gets me paid. My ability to see my third eye, my Ajna chakra gets me paid. My heart space gets me paid, keeps me supported, keeps me loved, keeps me growing. My solar plexus, my sacral chakra, my root chakra, money and all of it. But right now, as you stand, there are aspects of yourself that's easier to monetize. Why do we talk about monetization so much? I'm glad you asked. Poverty is dangerous. It is, especially in this world. Poverty is dangerous. Poverty breeds sickness. I'm not saying that rich people don't get sick. But, okay, when we look at it and we keep all things even, you are more likely to suffer a lot of pain and anguish and poverty than you do in wealth. The human experience is what it is, but not having money makes it harder. Poverty stops you from making conscious, intelligent choices about a lot of things, your education, what you, your food, who you mate with, Right now, I hate to do this because this is going to be, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a little out there, okay? But I want, I, some of you are in relationships right now, and you probably love your person. You probably could just look over there at them right now and be like, I just love you. I really do. I just love you, right? But had you been wealthy and had you been free to roam as much as you would or could have roamed, all in other countries, all in other states, all in other cities. Woo! You know what I'm saying? Would you probably really have still chosen this person? In most cases, you will never know. It's easy to assume you would when you have not been exposed to all of the other potentials of what you could have had. And see, poverty stops you from seeing the full scope of what you could have had. You start judging everybody based upon everybody else that you've ever seen. Because that's who, I mean, what else are you going to judge them by? Guys, be sure to share this live out, okay? What else are you going to judge them by? Okay? So you start to judge your friends, judge everybody around you, and you try to pick the best of what you think is available to you. That's what poverty does to you. The stress of poverty, the stress of poverty will break your body. And I'm going to tell you this, it's hard to have morals and scruples when you don't know how you're going to feed your children, how you're going to get back and forth to work. You end up at the mercy of a lot of people. Money ain't no option. It's a requirement. This ain't, it ain't holy or beautiful to suffer unnecessarily without assets and resources anybody who tell you that they're a fool <laughs> i have to remember where i'm at Woo so i say this ain't the blue app this ain't the blue app okay three things you need if you really want to have a good life you need self-awareness 
that's developed in spirituality. You you need self-awareness. And along with that, I'm, I'm making this a part of number one. Self-acceptance and self-love, right? Not just aware of yourself, but accepting and loving for yourself. The same grace, the same mercy, the same understanding that you have wanted others to have uh, for you. The same that you've given to other people. You must learn to master giving it to yourself. It ain't nothing I can do that I can't get over. I ain't supposed to be mad at me forever. I don't care how you feel about it. I don't care how the public judge it or what they say or what they, I don't care. I got to love me all the time because this is the one being that I'm never going to be without and that's me. So at the end of the day, I'm going to find a way to love myself through no matter what it is. Because what's the alternative? What has self-hate ever done for anybody? You got to be able to accept what you become aware of. And to love it, you as a whole. When you love yourself, you can be honest to say, I'm too good for this. Nobody else has to say that to you anymore. You start thinking, what the hell am I doing here? You know what I'm saying? I'm too good for this. This is crazy. Let me get myself together. You need that. You need the self package, okay? That self-package is developed in spirituality. Another thing you need is audacity. Not with other people. See, ain't nobody really lacking audacity. Most people just got it in the wrong place. You got all the audacity in the world to be trying to tell somebody else how they ought to live and what they ought to do. and, da -da 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 and da -da. You're just everywhere, right? Everywhere with everything, with everybody, except with yourself. And it shows. Uh-oh. Hey, Ashe, too. Thank you for joining the team. I don't exactly know how to work my team, but I appreciate it. And thank you for the ones who gave me donuts. I appreciate it. I appreciate it for sure. Um, and so now you are, you're over here and you're looking at your own life and thinking, I done gave all this great advice to everybody else. Because you know that's how it is. I, I remember feeling that way too. Like, I got everybody's answers except my own. Like, that is a lie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your answers is the same as their answers. The problem is you good at telling other people what they ought to do. But when it's you, you think it's too complicated because you can feel it then. See, I can tell you all day long, get up, make the videos. Get up, write the book. Get up, do this right here. And I can give you all of that all day long. And I really feel nothing about it because it's just the truth. It's just the truth. This is what you got to do. It's different when I got to tell myself, get up, write the book, get up, go live, get up, do the class, get up, get up. And I'm like, but I don't feel like it. Oh, my head. I stayed up too late last night on my stomach. I, I just don't feel like it. I ain't going to make it. I just can't make Because all of a sudden now I think that my feelings change the reality of what needs to be done. Listen. I'm not for everybody, okay? I'm not for everybody. I'm telling y'all that now. Everybody, you know, I'm not for everybody. Just because, I'll tell you in a minute, F your feelings. F-Y-F. <laughs> Sometimes you got to. Sometimes you got to bend them over the chair. Do you hear me? Because if your feelings is stopping you, what you know, they have too much power in your life. I had to learn it. So people do certain things. They'll be like, oh, F this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this because I'm all in my heart space. And it's just all this going on inside of me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and one day I had to wake up and be like, but you don't want to really suffering. Look at what you've done to your life. Not in a judgmental way, but in a stop and open your eyes and look around. Is this okay? Is this what you were aiming for? If not, when you feel that, you better find something else to do with it. Spirituality, let me tell you one thing about spirit. One thing about the universe, one thing about the primordial. They are never going to ask you to pretend like you don't feel something. Pretend like it's not there. No, 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 no. We don't have to pretend over here. We put that ish to work. 
Now you revved up. So when people make me mad now, I just be like, let me go manifest something with this. That's what I do. You don't push enough energy to irritate my spirit. And there's a couple ways I can handle that. I choose to handle it in a way that benefits my life. So I put it into my goals, my aims. If you're an entrepreneur, and especially if you're one who has a lot of people who've been telling you what ain't going to work. See, every time they open their mouth and they say your name or they speaking to you about what ain't going to work, they're giving you energy. You ain't got to get that back. You ain't got to try to block it like, no, 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 I don't want none of it. No, you absorb it all in. Hey, this is why it's going to work. You don't believe. That's why it's going to work. Because you keep on giving me this energy that's going to feed it everything it needs until it's working or until it has shifted into the thing that will work. We, as spiritual people, are the best entrepreneurs. I won't take that back. If you're really spiritual, then you're going to be one of the most dynamic entrepreneurs. You will experience dynamic success because you have this new avenue to feed all of your pain and everything else into transmute it to feed the thing, to grow the thing, to build the thing. I don't like people who commit essay against anybody, okay? I don't like it. And because I have endured it, I was able to transmute that to become a voice for others who have endured it. That was the first step. And then, you know, from writing a book to, to traveling around the country, speaking to other people who have been through it or whatever the case may be, to helping people to create from that pain. Before I could teach you how to create from it, I had to create from it myself. And so that's what I'm saying to you, loves. Your money and your spirituality are tied together to make it simple. Okay? Your money and your spirituality are tied. As you grow spiritually, your money should follow. If it's not following, there's an area where there's something present that is stopping the natural flow of things. And it's important to find it because most of the time it, it's, it's here. It's coming from the head. Most of the times you're thinking contrary to what you're building and creating. You're thinking contrary to your business. It's a lot of you. I could name you out. You busy building your business all the time and then as soon as you finish with the work, you're thinking, it just don't feel like it's working. And I don't know. I hope that people, I hope that people, you know, um, like this. I hope that people will support. I hope that people will talk about. I hope that people, I don't know. I just don't know. So you're working it in the mentality and in the heart space of doubt. That's why you manifest mixed results. Spirituality impacts your money. Now, I got a lot of haters, and I, I love them for what they do for me. You know what I'm saying? How could you ever hate food, okay? <clears throat> but most of what they hate is that they have not developed the mastery, the, self, the level of self-mastery to make spiritual principle work and bring about tangible results in their lives and one of the primary ways most people don't get it is because most people miss the importance of other people you will never not hear me say this never not hear me say it money comes from people all money comes from people i know the paper is made from trees okay but the circulation of money is a person thing. Dogs ain't spending money. Cats aren't either. Roaches ain't got no rent money. It is people to people. The whole money concept. That economic thing that happens is a people thing. When you are a person that likes to create drama, likes to stir up controversy, likes to be disliked, 
likes certain things because you've had it all your life and it's easier to just like that than to transmute and become better or more than what you are now you're going to alienate the people that the money is coming from. Now, I ain't saying I don't probably alienate people. I get much. <laughs> okay? Yeah. If people get mad because you're being yourself, love them. <laughs> you know, throw it against the wall. Handcuffs on. Super glue on their Boom. Okay? Just, no, no, no. We ain't doing none of that. But... <laughs> Outside of that, don't make it a habit of making enemies. Don't make it a habit of being a lone wolf. Don't make it a habit of trying to be an island. How are you going to have a business, but you don't want nobody touching you? You don't want nobody to know you. You don't want nobody to see you. You don't want nobody to hear you. You don't want nobody to judge you. Either you want it or you don't want it. And no matter how far into a cave you draw your soul, there will still be somebody that's going to perform the very thing that you don't want, which is why you went into the cave. Because you're the manifester. You're the God that's writing the story. You're the author. How you going to get away from your own writing? <laughs> you're just like, I'm running away from y'all. I can't take it. I can't take it. These people mean. I don't want no friends. Look at everybody. But you taking this and this with you. And so somehow, in a cave, when you finally are found, here come this person who is everything that you wrote on your story. Guys, I, I have to be honest with you. I've never really met anyone who, whose soul didn't impress me. Not even the people who right now can eat a whole eggplant. Okay. When it comes to a soul, they're all impressive. Not all of them are developed. Not everybody takes the time to really get into who and what they are. And this world is built to capitalize on the unaware and the unfortunate. You're not following me, unaware. We're going to hang that towel up right now. I'm not one of those that's going to leave you unaware. You're going to either learn or you're going to hate me and go on somewhere. But if you stick over here, unaware is not something you're going to ever be again unfortunate that's why we practice the practice the sacred arts the dark arts occult knowledge we practice it because we are not the unfortunate we are not beings who any longer feel the need to give their power and their energy to some invisible beings in the sky and other dimensions and realms somewhere saying that if they say then we'll do if they allow then we'll have we don't do that anymore because we understand the very divinity that brought us into existence we understand the spark of our soul that gives life to this body and we understand that that same spark is the one that keeps the universe itself in operation we be damned that we live and die with nothing. We be damned. We're not doing that. We choose to harness this energy and direct it with some wisdom and some knowledge. Direct it with some power and some freaking focus, right? Until we see. And we keep doing it. We ain't in no hurry. I ain't got to beat you. You got it first. You got it first. Yeah, I'm celebrating with you. And the more you guys that get it before I get it, the more celebration I get to do with you, the quicker mine is coming. The most dangerous thing is to run away from people who are manifesting everything that you want. Yo, if you sitting there and you're feeling jealous, please understand what you're jealous of. It ain't the things. It's the fact that this person has accomplished something with their own power and you have not yet tapped into yours. You're craving the power. It's it's not the things because the things are a result of the power if you get the power you can have the things and the problem is we're chasing things and we're giving up all our power to have them and we get the things and that shit is empty that's the problem it's empty as hell 
Fuck this car, man. It ain't even that serious. Fuck this. I don't even want. I I don't feel nothing any better because you you skip the steps. You put the cart before the horse. You got this nigga pushing them. You know what I'm saying? And I just let that one slip out. No more, okay? So I'm I'm okay. You got the horse pushing the cart with his head. That ain't how that's supposed to go. Of course it's harder. Of course nothing is going right. Spirituality will help you align your life perfectly. Spirituality will help you understand spiritual principle in a way that brings about true, tangible, and lasting results. I didn't get it and lose it, okay? I didn't. I got it and I kept it. See, I've had it before. So getting it doesn't, it's not, it's not, it wasn't impressive because I remember when I got it this time and I was thinking, I'm going to lose it again. I was worried because I had had opportunities before. I had had big lump sums of money before and I never could maintain it no matter what I did, no matter how intellectually savvy I tried to be, no matter how many books I read, no matter how much uh, advice I got from people who I thought should know, no matter what I did, it never lasted. And I was like, oh my gosh. So this time I was like, I don't know what to do. I just need to leave it alone. And I was just letting my bank account grow and grow and grow because I was scared. Scared and tired of being poor, scared, and really scared of having money coming in that fast. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. And something said, what do you do when you don't know? It's like, you start with Google. I was Googling everything. Google was my friend. And then I ended up on this uh, YouTube channel called Alux, I think it is. So I ended up on that channel. And I was, um, and, and they did not pay me. To say this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I know on YouTube, people are getting paid to highlight all these things. I ain't paid. This is not a monetized video, by the way, um, from anybody else. So I was looking at that, and they was talking about it's, it was basically like a YouTube version of lifestyles of the rich and famous that used to come on back in the '80s, right? Um, so I was, um, so I was watching it and seeing and researching about taxes and researching about all these different things because this was a time I didn't want to lose it, but I had done that before. What made the difference is I believe finally that I could learn and apply and maintain. See, when you manifest from a spiritual place, you have to maintain it from a spiritual place. When you manifest uh, any place for that matter, any place that you're manifesting from, you have to be able to maintain it or your manifestations will start to shift and fold and cave in right in your face as soon as you're not feeding it, whatever it was that brought it into existence in the first place. You can't have a baby and not feed it. Babies are not breathitarians. They need milk, water, formula, whatever they, whatever you give them. My, my, when Ontario came home from the hospital, my grandma was putting he, his eye polar, baby. He wouldn't even open his eyes yet. And literally, I had him the day before Thanksgiving. I got out of the hospital that Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. And she was putting dressing and cake in his mouth. She was mashing it up and sticking it in his mouth. I'm like, lady, right? This year, his birthday is on Thanksgiving. And that happens every so many years. Um... And, but yeah, it was, it was whatever you feeding your baby, you got to feed it. It got to have fuel to go grow stronger. Your manifestations is your baby, my loves. You got to feed it for it to grow. Now, there's a lot of people who would try to distract you under the guise of, Oh, I'm a spiritual teacher, and oh, I can read you for you. Reach out to me for a reading and blah, 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 blah. Listen. I do readings too, but I'm never going to tell you to reach out to me for a reading because my goal is for you not to need all these readings. That's how people get into these basically cultish um, groups and stuff where people are doing horrendous things to them under the guise of, oh, this is spiritual. Oh, I'm going to help you, blah, blah, blah. One thing I tell people is this. 
you can judge some books by their cover. When you are unsure about the cover, crack open the book. That don't mean you got to crack open the book with them by getting close to them. Look for proof of power. Look for results that you would want to have. When people are crying wolf and crying victim, though, and, and won't you be afraid of everything, those ain't your people. It's a lot of mis... mis um, and let me say this. I ain't going to even call it misinformation because that's not really what it is. There are a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing, in spirituality, just like it is in religion, just like it is in the world, just like it is in education, just like it is in politics, because people are in all of those things. And some people are wonderful and amazing, and some people are... Okay, that's all I'm saying. And if you don't quit popping up... She's just like, girl, I'm trying to feel the energy too, okay? So it's like, don't follow anybody who makes you feel disempowered. And no matter how lazy you are and how much you want somebody to understand why you hadn't done because you're in pain or because blah, 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 because I just have these conditions, you never go after people who make you feel comfortable being just how you've always been, not if you want that. People talk about selling their souls. Let me tell you what selling your soul looks like, okay? In most cases, when you look at an athlete, let's think Serena and Venus Williams, okay? Now, people who grew up where they were talk about how they would see them out there every morning before school with their father practicing tennis. Every morning. Every morning. You ain't, just, you ain't gonna let these kids play. You know what I'm saying? Sold out to this idea, this desire, the idea of greatness. It don't matter which area you achieve greatness, you're gonna have to give yourself to it. People say selling. It's people sold out to drugs right now. They sold their soul to a high. And they didn't sell, really, they didn't sell nothing. They gave themselves to a high and got nothing in return. For it to be selling, you got to get something in return. What should be the return on your dedication to your craft? What should be the return? There's a lot of things people use. They, they are like hot button words. I've reclaimed them all. Demons, the operating system that runs constantly in the background of your computer, is that what we're talking about? Or the one that runs constantly in the background of your computer, is that the one we're talking about? Oh, mm, okay, evil, you mean like the opposite of good? Okay, and then they throw out words like sold your soul to dark forces anybody whose skin color like this or darker stop with that dark magic like ooh spooky dark energy ooh spooky because that's the reason why you treat your people the way you do and that's the reason why you treat yourself the way you do because you have allowed other people to tell you and to make you believe that dark equals evil dark equals soulless dark equals wrong and you don't even see it but one thing has everything to do with the other either you have been um, penetrated <laughs> or you hadn't Either somebody has poisoned the well or they haven't. Tupac had a song. They say the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. I say the darker the flesh, then the deeper the roots, right? And I remember when I heard it, I was like, oh, it just went all through me. See, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm a Gen Xer and I grew up through empowerment music. Like there was a lot of music at one point that was meant to help us shed this whole lingering thing from slavery and the lingering thing from us being depicted as the worst type of people. But then when I got in magic, it was right back there again. It's like, I'm a light worker. I don't fool with dark forces. You sound like a fool. Life comes from dark forces. Life itself comes from dark forces. You sound silly, ma'am. 
You hadn't been educated properly. Not even have you read the Bible properly because even in the book you learn that darkness brings forth the light. That darkness is where life was created. Before it was introduced to the light. There is no system that doesn't say it. But it's so easy to keep that self-hate going in all of the systems. Black is beautiful. Even when we're talking about magic. Even when we're talking about forces. When I got into spirituality, I said, I'm in it. And when I said, I'm in it, that meant I gave myself to the entirety of what spirituality had to show me and what it had to give me. And you know what? It gave me a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom, a lot of freedom, so much power. Okay. But it also gave me money and it gave me back my body. It gave me back my health. It gave me resilience. It gave me flexibility. It gave me a wonderful relationship. It gave me a beautiful relationship with my children. I don't, I don't deal with all the things that I have dealt with and that I see other people dealing with because spirituality holds me in this place. Like the eye of a storm, it really don't matter what's going on around me. Somehow, some way, every time, every time, Every single one. The work of spirituality shows up to get me exactly where I'm going in a timely fashion and in a beautiful way. And that's what I want for everybody. And all of us can have it. No exceptions. No exceptions. The moment that you realize you want it is the moment that you can have it. And please remember that no matter what anybody tells you. Some of the people who tell you that... Um, they don't think you're going to make it. They're not trying to hurt you. They really just can't see you making it. It's just like, because they tried everything and they don't know why it would be different for you. We kind of quit personalizing things that's coming from broken people. Just because we love them and they've done a lot for us don't mean that they're not broken. Don't mean that they're not ignorant. I'm the matriarch of my family. I take that role seriously. Okay, I take it seriously. Thank you guys for talking about the earrings. So one of my apprentice graduates, uh, Darwin, had these made for me or bought these somewhere, but it's my actual magical mystic uh, logo. And so they, uh, my apprentices also had me a gold uh, phoenix made. I ain't got it on today uh, in Egypt. So an Egyptian gold phoenix. I thought that was so beautiful. They um, have really been good to me. A lot of you guys that's watching, you guys have been good to me. I want to thank you for that. Um, and I want you to know that the same way you have loved me, you deserve the same love. You ain't got to do as much as I'm doing for it. You just are here. That's enough. The universe loves you tremendously, exclusively. And once you accept that love through your spiritual practice, it starts to show up mirrored in other people. Okay. Um, last thing I'm going to say, guys. So if you happen to, so I'm having a ritual. If you've never had a ritual with me, um, basically we do the live on the blue app. <laughs> okay. All the information is on my website. It's magical mystic. Dot com that's m a g i c k a l m y s t i c dot com and we also are having a sale now for Black Friday we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff I don't know if I'm gonna actually be able to do a live TikTok sale but I, I plan on doing an auction I'm just having a hard time gathering enough <laughs> okay gathering enough merchandise for it because y'all like when I tell y'all the other day somebody had come to the store like are y'all going out of business like no we just selling stuff as fast as we can make it you know um, I think I've reached that point now where I need to hire a few more people and I'm going to be looking at doing that the first of the year. But um, we'll see. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. And then last thing, for anyone who is a content creator or wants to be a content creator, the Live Fest is coming up. Live Fest 2024 is important to sign up for it now. I think you got to have like a thousand. Um, hmm. I think you got to have like a thousand followers to do it. Hmm. 
taking notes. Y'all think I'm playing. I'll be following people and taking notes. Um. Mm -hmm. So if you got a thousand followers or above, then do that. And I know that there is some threat that we might lose TikTok, but until you lost it, go on and do your thing. Because I wasn't putting any energy into it either because I was like, man, they probably going to shut it down, blah, blah, blah. But already I've made money. And I've had a lot of new customers and clients come through. Um, so definitely look into the TikTok Live Fest 2024. Um, I'm trying to think if I got any other announcements. Also, y'all, I'm just getting ready to launch class. Okay, I, I was just on a session with one of my VIP clients and she was asking me about something. I was like, dang, I thought I just recorded this. I was like, oh, crap. Because Nishiki Ben had it ready for me. Guys, if you are a business owner, I take this very seriously. This is supposed to be worth. This is invaluable, okay? If you are a business owner or want to be a business owner and one of your problems is you lack consistency, or you lack know-how, or you just need like an accountability partner or somebody to kind of hold your hand and point you in the right direction on a consistent basis. Nishiki Chandler, I know, I know, I know. Listen, connect with me on the Blue Ramp, okay, M. Rain, and hit me up, and I will put you in a three-way with her. Um, she is my COO, okay? And she has helped me build Divinity Academy, the Legacy Builders Academy, and Boston Entertainment, and Rain, the brand, all of this kind of stuff. But she has a program called Cornerstone that is so freaking powerful. She's going to help you get your branding right, get your logo together. get And her price is really inexpensive, okay? Everybody cannot afford to work with me. Everybody ain't even ready to work with me yet. But let me tell you, you are ready for her. By the end of it, you're going to have a website. You're going to have, oh, yeah, I didn't hit my owl, guys. Okay, hold on one second. Shit. Oops. Okay, we're going to work on my potty mouth. Got it. Yes. Okay, so, um, anyway, so her prices are wonderful. And by the end of it, you will have your website. You will have your logo. You will have your brand message. You will have your elevator pitch. If you are black, you're going to have your, she's going to push you toward being recognized as a black owned business. If you are a woman, woman owned business, black woman, a veteran, this, that, that, and the third. She, her history is, is military plus, plus, um, um, finances, period. I think, I really think, if I'm not mistaken, she has a degree in accounting. Don't quote me on that. I know she got a degree, but I really want to say it's accounting, but I can't stress enough how important it is to connect with people like her because she brings about tangible results you can feel, and she has the patience to meet with you and, and keep you on topic. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you what you need to do, tell you to write that shit down, and expect you to have it done when we talk again. I don't have that time to do that. So I really celebrate the fact that she does. It takes a lot of energy, and nobody who, who has ever taken her, her course has ever came out of it empty-handed. Okay, so so connect with me if you need the hookup. You want to be connected with Nishika. She doesn't pay me for this. In fact, she's on my payroll. Okay, so she doesn't pay me for this. This is not a paid advertisement for her. It's just to help you. And even if you can't afford her cornerstone, being connected to her, you're still going to learn a lot for free. Connect with people who you don't have to always pay to get something out of it, okay? All right, guys, I got to go. I love y'all to life, and I will see you guys next live. Have a fantastic night.